AMD seems to be channeling some Snoop Dogg because today's review ain't nothing but a G thing. Good afternoon and welcome to Turbo Total Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety or Wookie Triple XL. And as I've alluded to, I'm playing with 56 Energy and 57 Energy for the better part of a week. And it's what a week it's been, quite interestingly. Basically, AMD brought out like gimped versions of their 5700X and 5600G by like 2% of a gimp and then slapped an APU on it that can run games like CSGO and Dota 2 on max settings at like 60 frames per second, which is kind of sick. That's basically the bullet point of the presentation, but we're going to go through everything step by step so you can see my testing methodology and how those scores were achieved. So inside of this machine, as you may notice, is a B550M mortar from good old MSI. I did have problems with the first board, but it was the board's fault and nobody else's. So we got this one going with the G-Series braces because they were the only things that had betas uh, up on the 2nd of August for us to test with. So we took that and then I took my ye oldie cooler from like two, literally from my 2700X, which I tested the 2700X scores with on with this cooler and this RAM and this SSD, except that was on a B450M-V2. It's a way more entry level MSI motherboard and not quite as fancy or shiny as the bazooka. Now, the reason I picked this board is because I think it's going to go into systems like this. The G-Series processors should be in systems quite similar to this. It's probably going to be used predominantly in workstation applications or in schools or anybody that wants to develop and not have to buy a thousand rand graphics card for absolutely no reason because you could just buy a chip that basically has that on board and gives you encoding and every, all the good things that go with it. And it's DirectX 12 capable, so it can actually do 3D API and that sort of stuff. This board, for instance, has a display and HDMI on it, so you can dual monitor out from there. The RAM is two of the Clev 8 gig 3200CL16s running at 3200CL16 for both of the tests. As I've mentioned, my good old ye olde Hikvision E2002 TB in Realme. Thank you, Hikvision, for spoiling me on that one. All of this is powered by an 850 watt Antec. And well, then, like I said, that B550 motherboard just pretty much rounds it out, doesn't it? Let's not beat around the bush anymore and dive straight into performance then. The processors like I said, are literally gimped versions of their previous selves with that GPU add-on. They absolutely thump anything second gen, as you can see with the 2700X. I mean, look at those single core performance scores. They're significantly better. And once AVX instruction sets get a little bit more modernized and newer in Cinebench R20 and R23, we do see that very good scaling where you're getting kind of an extra core over the top because of the SMT as well. Both chips did exceptionally well where encoding performance goes, handbrake, everything. Everything as far as the processor performance goes was pretty much exactly what I expected. But I think in this current climate, people are looking at this as a solution to do some gaming before they buy a graphics card. And I'm here to tell you, it's actually kind of viable. The AAA games, sure, they're not going to run at 60 frames. You're going to hit 40 on minimum settings, as we can see with like Metro. But... Vermintide 2, which runs on Unreal Engine and uses quite a lot of Unreal Engine, hits 65 average on the lowest settings. It doesn't look very appealing. It's nothing you would want to play on continuously till the end of time. But does it work? Yes, it does. Things like CS and Dota, you know, stuff that's Volvo optimized and can run on a calculator. Well, this is the calculator now that can run it at 60 frames per second. I mean, you're talking a 70 consistent with settings maxed out in CSGO. That's not a mean feat for an onboard graphics card. Now, I did also throw in my 5600 XT and had someone come and land and play on the system over the weekend, and it literally didn't skip a beat. Whether it was Escape from Tarkov, which we know absolutely breaks PCs, or League of Legends, which is another runs on a calculator setup, everything ran absolutely flawlessly. And that's kind of the goal here with the setup, I think for a lot of you, is going to be to have the G-Series 
processor now just so that you can at least gain because you know buying a 1050 for like two three thousand rand is less than a deal and then when it comes to it you can just add in the gpu and take advantage of all of that single core performance so if you were looking at it for that i can say say to you it is going to be viable and you will be able to do some pretty decent level gaming like uh, I, like I say, I'm actually kind of stunned that I could even run the AAA games on the onboard chip. So fantastic job there from AMD. For those of you who are in like development work cycle sort of stuff, this is also going to be fantastic because you're getting like really good multi-core performance. When I say GIMP, I mean, it literally is 5% behind the X series chips, at least with this kind of cooling setup, which once again, I literally never saw any temps over 60 uh, uh, even looking at things like fire strike and stuff during that physics test it uses a hundred percent cpu cinebench obviously as well i did hear the fan during cinebench r23 during the 10 minute run but the temp was still at 65 degrees i mean under that so you put something a little bit more decent like a hyper 212 you know or antique a400 as an example on top of that it's going to run flawlessly for pretty much its entire life you uh, it, it, this is not like okay this is a high airflow case it, it's got proper mesh up front with two 120s in and a 120 at the back but that's basically stock profile like out of box i added in this back fan and the thing runs without a hitch gaming performance multi-threaded workload performance great i do think this is where i'd like to proposition amd i think you guys are doing it the wrong way around I think your premium chips should actually come with onboard graphics and then the guys that are looking for gaming series chips you should do it sort of like how the 1600 af was set up where that's less premium than the onboard graphics one because people that want like high level development workstations and stuff will benefit from not having to buy a gpu because there's a really good one on chip but then you get the best of the processor as well i don't know the logistics around it i'm sure it's very difficult to get all of that on the dial on the chip but i think it would be really cool if you could buy like a 12 or 16 core that has a decent gpu so that if you're for instance using something that's predominantly cpu based like adobe suite as an example it does benefit from having the gpu there quite a bit but you would dodge having to buy that $100, you know, GPU at all because the one that's on chip is actually better and on chip. Do you kind of see where I'm getting at with this? Maybe you don't. I think that they should switch them around to be quite honest and that the premium should come with graphics and that the X series chip should actually be cheaper. Anyway, AMD obviously has a plan. It's probably going to be a much better plan than I have, but I'm here to tell you the G series stuff is real. It is very good. I'm ecstatic with the results and everything that I did see. I think they've knocked it out of the park. Anyway, that is all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side. At least in my eyes, she said if I cross her, I'll be in the grave. Are you under attack? But yeah, that's still my bag. I love the fact I didn't let her go. She looks the fact that I just let her know. Now we're together, it's a different mode We're getting crazy in a different world